right i think uh, setting up your meeting for youtube live right uh kadri bhai can you please uh, keep a track on that I'm just yeah i'm watching it okay yeah i need yeah it will come just refresh your screen once i think you'll get it okay ah, yes. so all right so very good evening to everybody uh, welcome back once again to the animation society of india's uh, sessions with the, our lovely guests uh, this evening we have with us uh, kv sridhar who is uh, known in the industry and i think worldwide in the advertising fraternity as pops and uh, we've got the details of pops on our website so i'm not going to you know spend time introducing uh, or giving you a background about him and who he is suffice to say that he is one of the big daddies of uh, the advertising scene uh, one of the first generation uh, people post independence uh, you know who have been very actively uh, working in the advertising sector now for well over five decades and uh, we felt that uh, it would be lovely to you know kick start our venture into the advertising series or into the series of speakers from the advertising fraternity who better to do it than with pops so uh, pops uh, thank you for giving us time on a saturday uh, like you said in the beginning today is saturday so i am presuming that you meant that it is an auspicious day <laughs> and that uh, you know we are we are all really looking forward to this session pops is actually an old uh, guest from uh, one of our earlier uh, anifest editions also where uh, when we conducted a session at uh, the fine arts center in chembur and uh, we were lucky to have uh, witnessed a fantastic presentation from him uh, a packed house packed audience and uh, pops just uh, you know killed it so looking forward to another session like that today uh, welcome welcome uh, on behalf of the society and on behalf of all the people who are here we will be taking uh, questions but uh, we'll take the questions uh, you know at the end of the session because uh, the speaker uh, prefers to you know kind of go into a flow and i'm sure there's so much of material out there that he has brought we got a quick little sneak peek uh it's it's really really interesting so uh pops all yours uh, you know fire away uh um, let me start with a question first in fact i think <laughs> why pops i mean why why i mean where did this monica come in from yeah uh, i think you know there are many stories um recently not so recently maybe 5 6 years back even uh, alek padam si started taking credit for naming me as pops uh, but anyway there are many myths and stories around that you have to read my blog to know why people call me pops um, so that's that's the answer go to my blog okay awesome <laughs> so let's start with your you know initial years i mean let's let's talk about uh, you know how you got into the field your schooling your early uh, early early years your inspirations what were the influences you know just just the journey of uh, you know uh, over the over the years why don't you take us through that yeah um thanks tony and thanks to all my friends at uh, animation society um very rarely people ask me to talk anything um more than you know advertising uh, so and then they not only is brief was for here an artist and then we love to know what goes um into the mind of an artist and uh, is or her evolution um so suddenly you know i started introspecting um and then reliving uh, my 50 odd years of uh, art career and uh, 40 odd years of advertising career i mean at surface level both are creativity uh, but there is a lot of difference between one to another and uh, first you know the art helped me um 
in uh, uh, in actually learning, observing uh, the important values. Uh, you know, you need to uh, grow up with. You know, thanks to my uh, upbringing, my family, my grandparents, um, my friends, my siblings. Um, they all have influenced me in the early years. Even today, you know, that influence is still there. Uh, so I am like a uh, like a little toddler in a toy shop. Uh, I've always been greedy. I want everything. You know, I don't want to leave uh, anything untouched. Um, Jacks always used to uh, used to tease me by saying, "Perhaps you think 10% of 10 different things will make you 100% in, in in anything." I said, "You know, yeah, it may not be. You know, the 10% is enough. You know, as we know that we don't even use 10% of our." Um, uh, capabilities in here, correct? Uh, that's, so anyway, um, um, like, you know, Tony and I were talking offline. So he said, you know, Pops, I'm going to give you a brief, a brief introduction of you to the people. I said, you know, don't worry about my introduction. My entire presentation is nothing but a same, shameless uh, promotion of myself <laughs> and my story. Uh, but so, you know, usually it is a little awkward to talk about yourself, um, but I'm not going to, um, I, I, I keep my sanity and and then I'll talk about the people and then the circumstances which uh, um, made me the person I am. Uh, and uh, maybe, you know, not strictly chronologically, but uh, somehow various influences. Uh, I'll try to narrate various influences I had at different stages of my life and uh, uh, the people who contributed uh, to those. Um, and maybe it's an interesting um, story. It, 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 was, it is very interesting for me to look back in the way we mirror uh, and then see what all the things I left uh, behind. But now I can't go back uh, in time. If I could, uh, I would go back and then correct a couple of them and then, you know, course correct my journey and then go back to my art because that's um, that's my first love. Um, so I'll just uh, take you through and then the um, uh, title is also, you know, uh, Reach for the Stars. It's uh, hugely uh, inspired by uh, Leo Burnett. But um, somehow inherently, it's been there in me that uh, that somehow you need to aim for big things, and then you you must go and then achieve something which is which is big. Um, the definition of big will keep on changing, as um, as the metaphor of reaching for stars. Um, they all look very far. Once you start the journey towards a star still the star is too far away from you. Um, so it's the same way, you know, uh, your destiny will always look um, look away from you and then you should not stop your journey and then keep it that uh, direction all the time. So that sense of, you know, the greediness and ambition which I had, um, uh, Leo Burnett summarized it very well. Leo Burnett, not the agency, but Leo Burnett demand. So what he actually says is when you reach for the stars, you may not get them, but he won't come up with a handful of mud either. Uh, so there is, um, there is nothing wrong, you lose nothing by aiming higher and then trying to achieve that. You may not achieve one, but you will not be a disaster either. Uh, correct in the bargain, you would have covered some distance and then achieved something. So if you are passionate about what you are doing, I think this is uh, uh, is a great uh, uh, metaphorical way telling you that uh, go for it. You know, as people say that everybody will dream, 
but only the courageous ones will chase the dream uh, so if if we were to uh, even die chasing our dream dream at least we would have tried something and then covered some distance rather than standing where we are and then not uh, aiming to uh, realize our dream so this is something um, i may be pops but there's a time even i was a kid um and uh, always you know i when i was born i was born on the eighth month uh, which was premature birth um they thought that i would um, um, i mean it would be difficult for me to survive under weight uh, but i did survive i had a good survival instincts um, from that time onwards and then when i was 5 or 6 you know i had another um life threatening danger which was uh, which was i had diphtheria uh, diphtheria as a disease now nobody knows and then it's been eradicated completely but those days um, uh, it was a very serious disease and uh, which actually chokes up in your um, in your throat uh, and then will not allow you to breathe and ultimately you die so it usually attacks um, little children and if you are not operated uh, uh, within 24 hours um, then there is a danger to the life and somehow uh, my parents and especially my mother uh, realized and then took seriously you know at times you say that you know stomach ache or headache or um, throat pain you know nobody takes you seriously if you are if you are a kid they think that you know it's all um, you are making up to avoid something but my mother actually you know took me to the hospital and uh, right time you know i survived um, so from that time onwards you know right from my birth and i had been a very protective kid by my parents and also my uh, grandparents um, who have always you know protected me because that survived Uh, the eighth month in a premature birth, uh, and then I survived uh, a diphtheria attack. Somehow, you know, they they always felt that if I have um, survived these two or uh, this kind of dangers, uh, then there is a purpose to this boy's existence. And they always used to uh, tell me that, that uh, you have a purpose and you will achieve something great. Because when I was a kid, you know, I was little. timid quiet shy and then always hide behind my grandmother or my mother you know never had a very active life uh, always been a uh, little um, little shy of taking up anything and then very very quiet you know maybe because of over protection um, i start with uh, with my grandfather who's here uh, the little boy is my grandfather this is my great grandfather uh, i had a lot of influence uh, uh, from my grandfather this is my maternal grandfather um, and their their entire uh, lifestyle is uh, a bit confused uh, lifestyle halfway they are into swaraj and independence and then their jobs are british jobs Uh, so they always had this mixture mixer of um, uh, the british life um, and also um, uh, the hindu life uh, the simplicity and gandhi followers and wanting to do that that's the reason why my great grandmother uh, was more involved in the in the freedom movement than my great grandfather um, the same thing um, with my grandfather this is my grandfather this is my grandmother um, and then he uh, is one of the most educated uh, um, those days he did ma um, llb and he was voracious reader and he was a theater actor uh, and he was a lawyer and then he was um, almost everything you know um, and then he used to review and then write um, 
for uh, American library. So every month he used to get uh, uh, around you know, 50 to 100 books for reviewing every month from across the world. Um, so he used to write the reviews and he also published many books, you know, especially at those days, they went to many books about uh, Indian cinema and Indian theater, especially the behind the scenes uh, and then the technical aspects of cinema and theater. So he has written many books and then his library used to run into a couple of rooms in a very, very large library. And uh, initially, you know, uh, I used to, you know, admire all the movie uh, and then started with the fiction, of course, you know, slowly, you know, started uh, uh, with his guidance, discovered with the books on theater and filmmaking and a lot of other things. And then he used to uh, really encourage uh, and then, you know, give me lots of books. Um, and uh, uh, he is actually my role model, not just in uh, in exposing me to the outside world through his uh, library and also to this fascinating world of theater and the cinema and arts. Um, he is also a cool dude, you know, while uh, he might be most well-dressed uh, uh, advocate in the entire um, town. Uh, but when when we travel from Vijayawada to Hyderabad, he used to be in shorts, uh, he used to be, um, uh, you know, carrying his flask of coffee and then his book, and then he used to carry his own chair, foldable chair, and then he was quite cool, you know, in the middle of nowhere, he will just sit and then, you know, read his book and then have his coffee. I always wanted to be like him um, because that is the coolest thing to do in, um, uh, in 60s. You know, you'll never see people and then he, uh, used to drink, you know, at least uh, 20 bottles of Coca-Cola, you know. Um, and then, you know, we used to have a Coke feast, you know, till Coke ran away from this country or we rather drove them away from this country in 17s. Uh, but that's a kind of a cool personality. And then his friends um, uh, included Utpal Dat and Prithvi Raj Kapoor uh, and a lot of other painters uh, um, of his age. And then he studied uh, uh, in um, North Andhra called uh, uh, Vijay Nagaram, which is a stone throw away from Orissa and then very close to, uh, to Calcutta and Shantaniketan. So he used to spend a lot of time in Shantaniketan and then he had great friends. Um, and then he always, um, encourage me to mail my work to them and then get the feedback from them. Um, so he has actually virtually exposed me to the to the world. Um, these are my parents, my mother and uh, father. Um, and my mother is um, uh, probably Chax is the only one who had seen her. Um, she is a beautiful lady um, and then big hearted. Um, all my friends, you know, I never kept touch with my school friends, college friends, my art friends, you know, all the big artists today, you know, those used to be my seniors, juniors, and my batchmates. I have not been in touch uh, while, till she was alive. Um, they all used to come to visit my mother. And then she used to know the progress of everyone uh, by heart. And uh, she later, you know, I'll come to her role in my life and my father's role, you know, uh, in my my life. This is the uh, consequence of uh, um, premature birth. You know, the boy sitting is is me, and then the other the smiling boy who's standing is my elder brother. Uh, we have only eleven months gap between us, so we virtually grew up as uh, twins. A um, lot of people used to think that we were twins. Um, so we both, you know, had a very, very, um, I mean, we used to play and then he used to virtually, you know, guide me, take me, give me confidence. 
to play and then to talk to people and little adventurous than me but i always used to hide behind him uh, but still i used to get caught because we both had the same height uh, my elder brother you know later in, went on uh, very you know unlike me he's uh, he's far more into academics he went on to get his doctorate in fisheries and then checked all that and then took a bank job um, and then those days bank job uh, used to be the most uh, aspirational thing and then he just retired uh, three years back um, after being the dgm of state bank of india um, so we we always you know that's that's one of the greatest thing um, which i had as a very very young child um, so i had a companion with whom i can share and then somebody who could guide me um, outside the home you know my my protection was always inside the home but he actually took me uh, to from the home to the playground to neighbor's house to the school and uh, guiding me in the interval um, uh, and also lunch breaks and uh, making sure that uh, i am all right all the time uh we are five brothers the fifth one was not born when this picture was taken um uh, my brothers played in very very big role um uh, in supporting me and then somehow you know six of us were born five of us were born in um, uh, in six years uh, so we are all almost one year apart uh, from each other and uh, five of us you know all boys we have no girls and uh, you know the old days you know all five of us used to have the same uniform here you can see me and my uh, brother you know wearing the same uh, clothing you know so we all all five of us used to wear the same same clothing and then go for weddings you know where we don't know anyone go to functions go and visit relatives where we don't know anyone so five of us we used to gang up and then give company to each other so we were not worried about where the parents are taking which city which town which village whether those people are known to us not known to us absolutely nothing um, and then later on when we uh, grown up uh, slightly to our teenage uh, we started uh, uh, doing lot of plays together only five of us you know we never needed any character unless you know um, uh, we wanted a female character so otherwise we used to play and then hundreds and hundreds of performances we, which we have given while we were in school itself and then the uh, the boy who is there on the left uh, um, he went on to become a film star uh, and my brother um, who gave up his writing otherwise he was a very very good writer and then he went to the bank and when me coming to advertising and other two brothers uh, as well have taken to um, taken to television serials uh, and uh, acting you know so this active um, within family the activity and then entertaining each other giving confidence to each other ganging up you know five of us against anyone who wants to bully us you know has given me a tremendous confidence because i was the most uh, most quiet and timid of all the brothers so that's the role my brothers have played and then they uh, they are good fun um, and uh, always you know always had the enthusiasm i think one thing which i have realized you know as i started growing up um, is i was born dyslexic um, so i never used to Uh, score marks and then my reading was poor because uh, and my writing and spelling were uh, weak and especially languages uh, was very bad which my brothers you know who um, who did not detect you know nobody knew dyslexia those days you know till tare zameen pe came in uh, uh, and then uh, um, they used to guard me and then help me in uh, in actually um even my younger brother used to help me in my studies you know where do you get is a brothers like that and uh, somehow you know we used to mug up or uh, study one day before the exam 
and then we always uh, used to do well. I mean, well in the sense, you know, the marks which are required, you know, we always uh, used to get. So they played an important role in uh, in making me from a um, from a very quiet, timid uh, um, boy uh, to somebody who's confident and then can stand up uh, alone by myself. This was my family that time, you know, uh, my mother, father, and uh, I mean, it was uh, it was not an easy thing. My father uh, was a sportsman, and he used to play football, uh, badminton, uh, and hockey. Um, those were his favorite sports. And even in those days, you know, where uh, people used to have, um, you know, same age, you know, N.T. Ramarao had uh, 14 children, you know. Uh, so, you know, those days, you know, people used to have so many children and then we were just five and, and that, you know, every, um, the Tonga guy or the rickshaw guy used to actually count us or every neighbor or every stranger uh, on the street because we are all same size almost. Uh, so my father used to really, really get pissed off with, uh, with everyone where if anybody you know, starts counting the number of children um, we were. Uh, and uh, he used to hate that. And then he um, actually told, as he used to stand for children, you know, all the time for family. And he used to pick up fights with anyone. He has absolutely, he's a sportsman. You know, he has absolutely no uh, inhibitions about uh, even doing a fist fight with someone with five children and wife um, uh, with them with him, you know. So he always stood for what is right and what is correct. And he taught us, you know, stand up for yourself. Don't let anybody bully, um, which is what, you know, my brothers have also helped me while the um, lesson might have come from my father, but, you know, a lot of that practice and then uh, uh, in a way nudging me to live up to that was my uh, brothers. This is my father, you know, one of those uh, uh, tournaments uh, in Bangalore. Um, so he used to be called as a flying goalie. Um, his nickname is Goli. Um, and then he checked everything in his life because of his passion uh, for football. You know, he came to VJIT in Bombay to study chem chemical engineering. And then he did not last year uh, for a month because he discovered that there was no football team. So he ran away and then he joined uh, Glasgow uh, as a uh, marketing executive. And uh, uh, even that also he checked uh, same uh, um, from Bombay. And then uh, he ran back to who he, his uh, hometown uh, because they didn't have a football um, uh, team. And my grandfather, you know, my paternal grandfather um, is diagonally opposite to my ma maternal uh, grandfather. He was a very serious man, very orthodox man. And um, he used to be a, a forest officer uh, of the entire uh, south from Adilabad to Kodai Canal uh, in British time. Um, and he was a very orthodox Brahmin. And he used to actually cook his own food. He never allowed his uh, servants or cooks or anyone uh, to really do that. And my father, because he had a traveling job and always used to be in jungles, uh, my father and uh, my uncle both have been bought up by almost 50 servants. Um, they used to have their own horses. They used to you know, our uh, prayer room is full of at least 35 to 40 tiger skins. And then we had stuffed tigers at the home, ancestral home. You know, all that never interested me. What interested me of my grandfather's belonging was his drafting table. You know, there a uh, lot of, you know, cartography he used to do. And then those scales, you know, the British um, the scales were measuring scales. Uh, you don't have to really convert, you know, it used to have, have several, you know, uh, hundreds of uh, scales. You just have to take it to whatever scale you want. You do your measurement and then you can do your drawing uh, 
whatever you want to join. But so, you know, that I was quite interested and uh, um, neither my uncle nor my father nor any of my brothers were interested in his antique treasure that time. And uh, anyway, Indira Gandhi has actually nationalized, you know, all the things in 70s and my grandfather's entire uh, weaponry and uh, uh, the animal stuffings, uh, his uh, personal diaries um, and everything is being put up in um, Municipal Museum of uh, of Vijayawada. You know, there uh, an entire huge room is being dedicated um, to his weapons and his diaries and uh, his adventures and a lot of other uh, equipment which he had. Uh, uh, so that was my grandfather, and then my father was thoroughly spoiled. And as I said, you know, 50, 40, 50 Javans all the time taking care of him. And um, he virtually grew up with them. Um, so he has taken the street language, and he's a rebellious guy. And then, you know, he used to bail out everyone, spend money as he wants. And uh, he was thoroughly spoiled. He never had to think about his career apart from football. You know, what I'm good at, I'm going to do that only, nothing else. Uh, so uh, his entire football career um, has been full of uh, ups and downs. You know, downs has been his injuries. When he used to come back from a tournament, you know, uh, we used to those days, you know, not modern technology and physios were not there. And he used to cover his wounds by by a red soil. And then when he used to come back, we actually had to take care of him for a week or 10 days. Um, and he had to prematurely retire from both hockey and uh, um, football because uh, hockey he plays um, um, the um, uh, defense, um, uh, left defense, you know. Uh, and then his collarbone was broken twice. Um, within a span of one and a half years. So after that, you know, with two fractures on his collarbone, he was advised to retire from that. Even today, you know, um, he switches on and then watches every uh, football uh, match, uh, which is happening anywhere in the world. All his contemporaries have gone and only one surviving um, person is there from his football team. And then who has uh, become, you know, Salim, who has become a very famous empire uh, in hockey. Uh, and uh, apart from that, everybody has gone, but still his passion is there, he's still alive. Um, he is 91 years old, and then still he has the same passion for this game. Uh, so that somehow, you know, the way my grandfather uh, has pushed my, uh, not even, you know, encouraged my father, not pushed him, uh, in uh, doing, you know, the kind of studies which he wanted his son or sons to do it, he has given entire freedom. Uh, and he said, do what you like, and then you don't have to. And then even, even till we grow up, uh, till we grew up, you know, his earnings were very small um, because he came in, he got in PNT, PNT, and railways are the two fiercely competitive um, teams in domestic circle. And uh, he used to play for PNT, and then he has got a job in PNT that was just uh, every day he goes and then signs, but never been interested in that job. But uh, all the supporting of our family, our education, whatever, you know, such large family has been supported from the funds of my grandfather's um, earnings. So, uh, I mean, that's a, that's a huge thing. I'll talk a little more about my father a little, little later. And uh, he had no clue when I started drawing uh, and then taken up to drawing uh, and, then, uh, and then painting. So my mother um, um, uh, used to, you know, home decor to uh, Women's Weekly to a lot of, you know, uh, American publications also. My grandfather used to subscribe and then send it to her. Uh, she was very good at, you know, all those, um, uh, you know, embroidery and uh, um, uh, those kind of stuff. And then she tried to actually teach me um, that all the embroidery things, you know, the 
parrots and something else, something else. You know, that those books she used to give me and then say that, you know, this is all probably you, you should learn. My father at the other end had no clue of what my mother does and then why she's teaching, what she's teaching and then what am I painting? And then he did not even know how to encourage me. Uh, so he went, you know, only thing which he knew was, um, was somewhere in his uh, office. The union guys used to have paints in, in their rooms and huge chat papers. They used to write for all the union demonstrations. This is Indira Gandhi's time and um, George Fernandez's time, correct? You know, strikes were uh, usual and then, you know, people write those chats. And uh, he went and I told them, my son is painting. I want, uh, you know, colors and some paper. So they gave him, a, gave him you know, bundles of these huge 20, 30, uh, and then 30, 40 drawing sheets and chat papers and a huge poster color and then also colorings. And so equipped with all that, he came very proudly and then gave it to me. Uh, and then he said, you know, draw son, whatever you want to do is all yours. You know, do it. I didn't know what to do with, with such uh, large sums of color and such, such huge, uh, um, I was barely five years old at that time. So I used to virtually sit on the paper and then paint around me. And then that's how I played with big brushes and vivid colors, you know, which probably um, when you see a bit of my work, uh, you will realize that, you know, how that uh, vividness and then the boldness came uh, without knowing my father has introduced me. All other children will start with a small drawing book and then a pencil which is nicely sharpened and then, you know, thin lines, zero brush, you know, uh, doing all that they're scared of even coloring, uh, of doing anything which is big and bold. Whereas my father taught me, you know, without knowing um, that um, do be bold and be, you know, don't worry, put the color, as much color as you want, and then you play and then you'll get somewhere. So that's how, you know, that was my introduction to, um, art um, and then he used to take pride and then you know roll up all those chat sheets and then take them to office and then show it to everyone and uh, he used to take great pride that um, uh, that I started doing something which is very different and such colorful work which I've been doing. This is my grandfather I have already I told him the influence which he had uh, both on uh, on uh, uh, acting careers of you know our brothers and also you know reading exposure to the world and most important thing is he um, has taught me the only thing which he knew was seeing his friends draw and then he's familiar with the work of Arabindranath Tagore and Kondapilli uh, Sheshagit uh, Rao and uh, KK Habar and those kind of legendary artists. And so he's aware of the work uh, those guys have done. He used to guide me and in his own way, um, the makeup as an art which he has learned. Um, and then he tried to teach that for my portraiture, you know, how a face is divided into three different parts and then, you know, how to draw, how to bring in the structure, how to prop up a character in his own way. You know, all that has really helped me later on when even I flirted with, uh, um, as an art director with feature films. My brother went on to become uh, uh, a big star and a hero um, in 80s. Um, uh, the boy who was sitting next to my grandfather. My grandfather was old, but he acted till, till, he, um, uh, till he died. Um, that's his passion. And uh, my brothers have taken far more to theater than me. And then they flourished. Uh, uh, and then he has trained and nurtured a huge, you know, a, a large generation of actors and also directors and uh, theater exponents uh, from Andhra Pradesh. And then today, you know, all his books are in syllabus with a lot of institutions, including Pune, Vishakapatnam, and a uh, lot of other Delhi school of acting and a lot of other um, colleges. 
now this is my paternal grandmother um uh, she was quite old you know when we were young only you know and then uh, uh, she had problem with the knees she was bedridden and then um uh, those days they were not very good uh, wheelchairs also for her to be comfortably travel everywhere uh, though the chair with wheels was there um, but never been uh, as mobile she actually introduced me to a lot of stories mythological stories and uh, also the stories of freedom fight uh, and mahatma gandhi somehow you know the indian mythology and the stories you know and then she used to actually later i realized that some of the stories were not existent in the original uh, mahabharata ramayana and then she used to make up stories which um, which you know teaches me some lesson and then they attribute that to krishna and arjuna uh, or to bhima and uh, uh, yudhishthira so she actually cooked up in a which i never in you know, a very convincingly uh, i learned all the stories and also about the gandhi and gandhi uh, stories about you know how he had eaten um, uh, chicken and uh, after that yeah, he could not sleep in the night and then his tummy was making the noises of a chicken um and all all kinds of uh, things about gandhi so gandhi's influence you know later um, um became you know very uh, very important for me uh, to really um, set myself certain values and then certain ethos but she is the one who actually um, generations of uh, um, even her previous generations her generation and uh, her children's generation also the entire freedom struggle and lot of those uh, uh, and then she used to narrate like anecdotes and episodes like a kahani uh, correct each one will be an episode and then she used to entertain me and um, i used to do all the service and i was really her pet and then learned quite a lot and then this man's stories you know i've heard from all my grandparents and i was fortunate enough to even have my great grandfather um alive you know when i was a child and then through them also and then you can see the influence you know which made me do several things in my life you know little later this is my mother you know apart from guiding me and then being the uh, same person my father never used to care for household things you know he is always a sports person and a very straight forward man and he has um, he has you know just empowered my mother saying that you manage everything you do everything and he used to go and then play and then party with his friends so he always has been like that he does he did not even know how to pour water into his glass if he wants water he will just say water that means that my mother has to give him water <laughs> no that's a kind of uh, relationship they had but my mother is a personification of patience wisdom um and uh, though she has not uh, um, studied much till um, those days you know 7th uh, standard or 8th standard she is a voracious reader um, and then um, she used to read quite a lot because of her father you know who taught her how to read uh, and then exposed her to great uh, books and literature and then she had a, a very great influence on us to be disciplined and then to really because we are five brothers did not have we loved her so much especially me um, i never wanted her to feel the absence of a daughter but so i went on to do a lot of things in life you know which um, i learned cooking for her i learned tailoring for her i learned uh, embroidery for her i used to draw uh, uh, make rangoli and then put all the dots you know people used to uh, really figure out try to figure out you know how this joy dots have been joined together uh, so that's the kind of uh, um, um, reciprocation reciprocation we had towards our mother not just me you know all our five brothers are very good cooks and then we do household uh, chore very well and then we always wanted because my mother is the only woman 
uh, in the house and then we protected her and then we never wanted her to miss um, miss a girl uh, in her life till we got married and we even after marriage also today you know um, still you know i cook at least a day in a week um, and i used to cook little more when children were younger because they liked uh, used to like my cooking and my mother also taught me one thing you know that time um, cricket was uh, peak in our um, um, our lives you know uh, all all of us you know including my father six of us used to be glued to the radio set and then we used to get those uh, scoring sheets and virtually do a scorer's job you know every single run whether it is a bye or whether it is a um, a legitimate run or a boundary or a, or a drop chance we used to record and then we had several test matches which has been recorded with uh, with us you know all of us used to sit and and then only passion was uh, was cricket you know all of us used to listen to cricket quite a lot knowing that uh, um, that gavaskar i mean of course before um, gavaskar also you know we had um, vinu mankar to um, pranab roy to you know lot of old stars um, uh, patavdi uh, to lot of you know old stars but suddenly you know when when we were you know getting into our college um vishwanath and gavaskar were um were uh, the idols uh, for everyone you know people used to uh, look up to them they were rock stars both of them you know they can demolish anyone my mother did not know much of cricket you know but she uh, understood enough of cricket by living with a with a sportsman and also five crazy kids you know who are always um listening to the um, cricket she told me um, if you play cricket you must play like gavaskar otherwise there is no point don't play at all so and she that time you know she told me that um, that i am thinking of not uh, because i was sulking uh, because my parents did not send me Uh, to JJ School of Art uh, to study uh, fine art, but still she said, you know, no, wherever you are, you are going to make it, and then you can't be lazy, and then you have to like uh, Gavaskar played, um, you have to be the best, and then you have to play like Gavaskar in your field, otherwise there is absolutely no point, and that that belief, you know, to be the best has uh, brought in more uh, greediness. and then you know um, a more zidiness in me saying that i must do i must do i must do does not matter how many odds are against you you are dyslexic fine you have to uh, be a graduate in uh, in think you know fine i'll slog it out and then do it but i have always taken the challenges because um, of that energy even today um, is there in my uh, had you know i used to cook uh, and then you know feed a lot of people in france you know for can festival you know all the indians you know hungry south indian and indian boys and girls used to come to my i used to take an apartment and then live there in at can uh, for one week 10 days um, so i used to feed them you know so um, the newspapers picked that up and then made uh, me write um, and then cook uh, for even for them also this is my art teacher um, uh, and he taught me the art um, so though i had uh, some uh, interest and you know some skills but he really nurtured all my skills he he actually i joined him when i was in 6 standard and uh, he taught me art and then he virtually trained me till i finished my bfa um uh, uh, till that time you know almost uh, almost uh, uh, 15 uh, years he regularly taught me and he is um, um, topper of jj institute of art 
and uh, he was one of the most famous um, landscape artists um, in the country. You know, he used to do watercolor landscapes, you know, very well and very famous. Uh, his contemporaries were S. M. Pandit. You know, uh, he brought in a lot of uh, commercialism to art, and then he um, made calendar art apart from Radhvarma. The second person made calendar art as as admirable real art. Um, and then, if you get a chance, look at his work, and then beautiful work. Um, and then he had influences of all those greats. And uh, he again, you know, made Hussein. Uh, Heber um, to SM Pandit to everyone come to our uh, art institute and then give us demos and uh, lectures um, and that you know is unbelievable as a child without even going into a professional art course and then you have the greats coming and then exposing you to great work and then giving you tips and then asking you to um, do things. So these are some of the things in my early um, life. This is inspired by Asam Pandit. Um, so this is the kind of work I started doing in my, and then the influence of my um, my teacher. Uh, I did lots of landscapes uh, uh, of Goa. Um, almost everything has been sold. Only a few handful have been left. I could only find one or two. In uh, most of them are in uh, Hyderabad or with different uh, uh, collectors, you know, across the country. The, these were some of the rejected ones. So, um, and then the press was also quite uh, 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 interested in in the kind of work which we used to do uh, in those days as students. Uh, caught the eye of everyone. In fact. P.T. Reddy, you know, who used to run AP Lalit Kala Academy and who is the most celebrated uh, uh, art uh, artist uh, from Telangana in the entire uh, global Indian art scenario. Um, Vaikuntam and Lakshma Gaud, later on, the biggest artist, you know, who were commercially also been very successful. Um, we're all uh, uh, disciples of, um, uh, of his. So the kind of you know um, encouragement we used to get, um, even um, the museum directors, the ministers, the cultural affairs, the Lalit Kala Academy, all of them, even even that time, you know, artists like Lakshma Gaud, Vidya Bhushan, you know, they all used to encourage and never you know try to put down. They thought that we were almost like uh, their children. They used to contribute uh, by uh, actually buying our work before the exhibition so that we will get enough money uh, to really run the exhibition for one week or two days or to book galleries or to frame our work. And uh, one of the, you know, as I said, I have always been very greedy and then two people who have instrument, uh, inspired me quite a lot, you know, when I was a child um, is one is Rabindranath Tagore. Um, so his greed for art and literature is unparalleled uh, in the modern history. Um, art, uh, literature, poetry, uh, patriotism, uh, religion, um, and all form of writing, short stories, long stories, you know, you name it, you know, he has done everything and he was a master at everything. I don't know how many of you have really uh, seen Rabindranath Tagore's paintings, though his brother is far more um, famous um, for his art, but Rabindranath Tagore, you know, is equally um, uh, interesting and then he was unorthodox in his uh, approach to painting. So one is Rabindranath Tagore, second is Michelangelo. Um, so if you look at, you know, artists of that period, they um, are artists, they were sculptors, they were weaponry designers, they were uh, um, um, the um, gatekeepers of flora and fauna, uh, they're botanists, 
and then you know they are geologists and they um, architects and uh, all kinds of things you know they were engineers every form of creativity you know uh, da vinci designed uh, um, one of the things you know da vinci had designed is the canal gates you know the bridges and little canals which you see in india the old old those gates were designed by um, um, uh, Uh, Leonardo, um, even uh, um, they all for uh, wars they used to really create the weaponry, modern weaponry, and then you know how to blast. Some of them you might have seen in Bahubali, and a lot of them were designed by these artists. Uh, so the science and art, you know, both of them bringing together, and then you know how uh, that generation uh, of artists. Uh, have really uh, you know uh, mastered almost everything because they show to the world that everything is interconnected and uh, when i was uh, uh, a student of anatomy uh, when i visited um, lakshma gaud you know who's famous artist he told me that you forget about everything else if you want to um, if you are interested in human beings and then human figures you have to learn anatomy so i asked him a stupid question of why anatomy um, he said unless you know the bone structure you cannot put muscle over that unless you can put muscles over that you cannot put veins on them unless you put veins on them you cannot skin uh, the body unless you skin the body you can put a drapery on that and then lighting on that so if you miss one step um, your drawing is imperfect your sculpture is imperfect uh, and uh, uh, the stories and uh, the books which i have read about michael angelo is he was outcasted uh, by people because in the nights um, in the candle light he used to go to graveyards dig the recently um, made graves and uh, with a candle light he used to di- dissect the dead bodies and then feel the human body and then you know uh, sit under a tree and then make all the sketches whatever he had and then again go back and then you know see little more of how the bone structure is and how the muscles are flowing and then how veins are traveling and then again go back part by part of human anatomy and part by part of the entire uh, system of uh, um, there was no and james james body or uh, john's body you know which readers they just introduced later and then these guys have to learn like that and then people threw stones on him and then churches uh, really boycotted him and then he has to actually hide uh, and then you know go to different kinds of graves in different uh, even countries also to really um study that but so i really you know he virtually became blind by by using the uh, dangerous vegetable dyes uh, on the fresco paintings his entire life has been dedicated uh, to that and then you give him anything you know he would make it possible you know different uh, transport systems to engineering systems to weaponry to any kind of engineering problems art problems architectural problem city building church building uh, any of those you know sculpture you know michael angelo's sculpture and how he made uh, even david out of uh, a broken stone so that really gave me um, tremendous uh, um, interest and uh, so much of interest that uh, when i was um, enrolled as a bfa student in um, in gulbarga university um, in uh, in gulbarga ideal fine art fine art school which was a new school and then they allowed a uh, handful of brilliant students to come in as uh, non resident students but so i joined in that batch uh, um, in uh, early 70 uh, as as a resident um, as a um, non resident uh, art student 
So Usmania, I was doing my BSc. Um, so I went to Usmania University, Usmania Medical College, and then showed my work and uh, tried to convince the dean and uh, attend the anatomy classes in Usmania Medical College. You know, half of my friends were either because I've done BSc, either after intermediate, they got into medicine, or later they became uh, medical representatives. So I had a lot of medical friends um, who virtually, you know, made this happen for me. Uh, though, you know, I couldn't stand the preservatives and then the smell, um, I had to withdraw myself, you know, quite early. Uh, but I have been to several classes of uh, anatomy. So anatomy, you know, took a huge, a part of my life uh, in the early years. I was in no hurry. And then, you know, once I had got a command on human body, but then I started traveling um, across, across the city and uh, across the country and then make rapid sketches. This is one of those uh, rapid sketches. I think this one was in Goa um, with the um, fish and then the... Um, and then the meat market um, where I had uh, drawn. The people change and then you get a nanosecond, you know, and each of these have taken under a minute, you know, 30 seconds is what is the gold standard for great artists, but I managed to do it uh, under a second. Because of my training uh, and then my interest in anatomy, I could, uh, and also the boldness, which, uh, which I have learned from my uh, father's experiment, uh, allowed me to really have very powerful um, and minimalistic uh, um, sketches, you know, uh, portraiture of people. This is again, you know, somebody who I looked at him, he looked like Jagjeevan Ram, but he is not, he is a uh, uh, passenger in a uh, railway um, uh, train and then he was uh, sitting uh, in front of me. And then I just uh, drew him in um, in my early years, 72 or 73, uh, sometime around that. So this, you know, really, really made me uh, do very realistic, you know, how difficult it is to do animals. Uh, while Hussein's muse is a horse, my muse used to be a cow uh, and buffaloes. And so I used to draw quite a bit because of the bone structure. So I was... Uh, very, very fresh from my studies of anatomy and uh, the bone structure of these animals, I really used to marvel. You know, in horse, you will not see uh, too much of bone structure, but in buffaloes and cows, you can see the bone structure. So um, that interested me and then did a lot of work. These are all very, very rapid uh, sketches of uh, people. You know, these are all under a minute. Um, uh, this was not Calcutta, those Calcutta um, um, rickshaws also look like this. This is from Vijaywada. Um, so again, you know, um, observing people, um, understanding anatomy, looking at the beauty of, uh, of human body, the bone structure, and then the way the body language, um, and also the prop around it, you know, surrounding that. Um, so that uh, really interested me. I, I had done, you know, many hundreds of um, uh, ones, you know, each day. I used to run out of all my money. And uh, my father used to uh, used to actually give me a great advice. Uh, and then he used to collect books from his friends, daughters and sons who have uh, done their sciences, you know, after their uh, completion of uh, that course in the summer holidays, he used to actually all the record books he used to borrow, or not borrow, and then you know collect from them and then give it to me because on the other side it's a white paper, right? On one side you have a record book, you have a diagram. The other side is uh, is empty, and uh, that is what has fed me. Uh, apart from buying the uh, newspaper or even going to um, some of the publications where. Uh, Rims and rims of paper used to be wasted because the corner is uh, uh, is folded or uh, something is wrong. So they used to throw that 
So I used to actually bribe the foreman and then collect all those paper and then get them cut neatly and then bring them and then use that newsprint, you know, to really draw, clipping them onto a board. But so it was, you know, though, you know, whatever money I used to earn by doing a lot of freelance work or selling art and whatever extra money my father used to give or my brothers used to generously donate from their pocket money, some money to my art fund. <laughs> Still, it was not enough. Uh, this is the kind of work which, uh, which you need to do um, for your academical uh, thing for fine art, you know. Uh, this is a uh, wash drawing. Uh, that means that you take a handmade paper, you wet it, and then you paint it, wash it completely, and again paint it, again wash it, again paint it, again wash it, by actually putting that to a frame. After washing it for five, six times, um, you will get vivid colors like this. Uh, these are all vegetable dye colors, uh, some of the old colors, and um, this can, can live as many years uh, and then it will never fade. So this technique you know, was very important for art students to do in their initial years to really do a memory composition where subject used to be given and then you know to uh, do this composition. Um, and then we used to get 21 days to paint this. So each art exams used to take more than 45 to 50 days. So my completion of my science and art, it helped me tremendously because my art school um, used to, you know, some papers used to run from three days to 21, 22 days. And my, um, apart from my practicals, you know, I used to finish my exams within one week, you know, all the um, theory exams. So I used to finish the exams and then run back. So life study, again, a 14 day affair and then a 20-day uh, affair is composition. I used to finish it within uh, within five days or six days and then run back to Hyderabad to do in my science exams in Usmania. So I used to shuffle between these two um, cities those days. And what I remember, uh, Pops, you telling me is that the distance between Gulbarga and, uh, uh, you know, your uh, Usmania, was nearly about 300 kilometers. Uh, not even 300 kilometers, you know, it's much lesser than that. Um, today it will take four and a half, five hours to go by road. Um, same hours, you know, four and a half, five hours by train. Those days it used to take almost 20 hours to reach Gulbarga by passenger trains. Because the express trains, you know, Bombay, Hyderabad trains never used to stop at Gulbarga. So the passenger trains, you know, uh, used to stop and they used to take a lot of time. So each time I plan a trip to Gulbarga, two days would go in my travel. Uh, and then another two days, three days, I have to finish the paper and then come back. Uh, so this, uh, I mean, uh, then, you know, oil uh, was introduced. Then I took um, the same approach which I had uh, which I have learned uh, in my early years of being very bold with my with my strokes and then the work. So I used to do portraits, uh, not only you know as a subject in my college, but I used to do a lot of commission portraits for a lot of you know Arab sheikhs. They used to pay me hundred rupees for a um, uh, for a canvas of twelve by eighteen inches. Um, so that was a lot of money, you know. I used to paint the Arab sheikhs uh, um, portraits and then send it back to them. Uh, and then I used to get a lot of money, you know, that's how I used to finance. Um, but though, you know, they never wanted that big uh, boldness, they wanted it to look like a photograph. So I had to work a little more on, on making it look a little more realistic, but it really, it really helped me in making a um, lot of money. Um, how old were you at this point in time? This was uh, right. Uh, this, uh, probably I would have been uh, 17, 18 uh, years old. And 100 rupees, uh, this is in, in uh, this, I, I would presume this is in the 70s or 60s. Yeah, that was my father's salary. 
So that's a, that's a kind of value. And then, you know, my father, again, you know, stroke of luck or his brilliance of, uh, or it's an accidental genius. Um, my father looked at, you know, this kind of work which I was doing. And he said, hey, you're good at doing all these portraits with oil color. So I, I said, you know, yeah, not bad, not very good, but not bad. I do it a little more faster, quicker than anyone. Um, I do it within a day or two while everybody else will take uh, five, six days to do a portrait or a real life study. Uh, then he said, you know, I know my friend runs a company and then they also do portraits. Uh, then I said, you know, will you take me to him? He said, you know, certainly. And then he took me. And then what his friend does is um, he paints cinema banners. I mean, he owns a company. He has, uh, you know, half a dozen artists, 30 feet by 40 feet, you know, the kind of uh, hand-painted uh, banners which you see at, uh, um, uh, at cinema theaters. Uh, those are the kind of, you know, um, things which, um, which they used to paint. And then they saw my work and then said that, you know, everything. You know, the artists who work here, you know, they don't know anything about art. They can only write portraits. You know, uh, uh, observe the word, they only know how to write portraits, writing, not painting, correct? They know everyone by heart and then they just do it because it's just the memory muscle which acts and then, uh, you know, does. They trace with a magic lantern the entire uh, outlines of a photograph and then they will ask the junior artist to fill it and then the senior artist will come and then uh, uh, give the finishing touches and then bring in the likeness of the uh, actor. And so when I did that, you know, the first job they gave me was to really do those layouts, you know, for the banners. And then they asked me to fill in um, the color. Then, you know, they really felt that, you know, I was very good at um, doing it at the same time. Some of them hated me because I used to put my own colors. Uh, and then they never used to like that you have to put pink. I said, you know, how can you paint a hero in pink? You know, they wanted it pink and fluorescent colors, blue and all kinds of things, you know, use of gold. Um, then I said, you know, no, my color palette is this and then I'm going to do it in this way. Um, so they never used to approve it grudgingly. Some of them have uh, uh, approved and then I started uh, painting, you know. I have uh, worked there for almost two years without any any pay um, or um, I used to do all the work in the night because they don't work during the day. During the day, they sleep behind uh, the banners and uh, their living condition is very poor. All of them used to drink, they're all half naked and then they never shave, they never bathe and then they uh, sleep with turpentine and then colors and then along with the dogs behind uh, behind those uh, you know, huge uh, uh, banners. Their life condition is very, very poor. Um, and then they used to actually tell me that you come from a good family, you're a good student, and then you learned everything about art. Why do you want to do this? So I, I told them, you know, 40 feet portrait I will never do in my life. But so to comprehend and then to put together a 40 feet portrait, is a great task for me, you know, as an 18 year old boy, I used to weigh uh, 47 kgs and very thin, you know, the first while filling only my hands used to really ache because six inches, eight inches brushes, you have to fill in the color on uh, those ladders and uh, scaffoldings. Uh, and then even there is no safety net, even at the theaters, when you actually join three, four pieces together, on the front of a theater, you have to climb 40 feet, um, 30 feet, 40 feet, and uh, even more uh, to really join and then paint and mix one part of the uh, painting to the other one. So I had fear of heights, you know, and I would look, look down. I always used to do that. And then I figured out a, a technique that, you know, you can actually put it on the ground and then you, uh, you join all the pieces and then you paint it properly and then get the people to actually use the police and then put it up on the on the top so the contractors you know felt that was a good system and then they started 
you know, uh, doing that. So I have uh, actually two and a half years, you know, uh, I was virtually in the night, I was living with them. And during the day, I used to sleep for a couple of hours and then back to my college. Um, so that gave me a tremendous power of sense of proportion and uh, also the power in, uh, in using big brushes and solid colors. So I, I had done, you know, hundreds of them, Zanzir to um, uh, Kache Dage, you know, Vinod Kumar to Shole, to a lot of Telugu movies and uh, Guns of Navarin, uh, where Eagles Dare, you know, a lot of English movies also. You know. So I had done all that and uh, this, is, this is not what I painted. I just took a different picture um, because they did, we never shot, we never kept a portfolio those days. There were no cameras also. Uh, so that uh, was the um, uh, reason, you know, how uh, my life has transformed and then able to really do stuff which was very big. And then, you know, when I um, started becoming a little older uh, by 20, um, so I started experimenting a little more with my work, you know, now that I understand uh, anatomy, now that I understand large proportion of uh, paintings, now I understand, you know, power drawing and then power painting, life of a stroke will be there only if it is continuous. The moment you lift your pencil, the stroke is dead. So how can you really keep a live uh, drawing, you know, or sketches uh, alive all the time? Having learned all that, then I said, time to experiment. And my first experiment, you know, which, um, uh, which I did um, was to really take a metaphorical themes, you know, uh, those days because of our upbringing, boys and girls are the same boys are no different and girls are no different and the kind of empowerment which uh, uh, which uh, the people who have inspired me those days uh, including the artist deep prabha to indira gandhi to everyone and then the work of hussein and then the shakti paintings so i said you know why can't i um, really get to an expressionism and then try and then experiment with um, now you can play any which way because you know human anatomy so well. Now you can break the rules and then you can actually create something free, which uh, is what made me um, do a little more experimentation and my art evolved. This is how um, uh, academics have taught me uh, to do a sketch uh, of a person. And uh, I started painting like this. Um, uh, started, you know, a lot of drawings and then painting where there is a, um, expressionism. And each time when you actually feel uh, something happening in the society or there was no Twitter to express anything. So suddenly it occurs to you that, you know, different faces of the same person, or it is just that United Front, um, they actually show this is uh, more about, you know, how the Janta Dal was trying to form that time uh, with Jay Prakash Narayan. So how um, the front looks the similar and then the back, it's a face looks the similar. So a lot of things you know, which uh, found way into my thinking and triggered me to do a lot of you know, drawings. Now, of course, you know, some of them will be close to what you think um, you have started with. And then you can see the influence of that you know, free flowing um, correct anatomical figures to free-flowing drawings um, of the beast in a man and, you know, uh, how how the beast comes out, you know. You... I took a lot of liberties and uh, this is what, you know, uh, was highly appreciated uh, by artist community that time coming from a, a very young kid. Uh, this work, you know, while I was doing this, uh, parallelly, I was doing, you know, uh, which I promised um, um, Tony that I will show, but I couldn't find them. Maybe they are in Hyderabad. A lot of my work is uh, is there in uh, Hyderabad. Uh, I used to do sink plate etchings, you know, taking this expressionism further um, into that different layers, you know, it's. Uh, 
uh, it's almost like a like a block and then printing. So you take a zinc plate or a copper plate and then you put you put you know um, the varnish and uh, colors which uh, acids which are resistant and then you do a lot of etching by different tools and then you etch the um, uh, the top highlight surface uh, and then you uh, develop that plate and then take a print and then again you know do a deeper cut of that and then you go to the midtones and then do a deeper cut then you get to the shadow areas then do a little more deeper cut to really get you um, uh, the outlines so this um, is mostly you know the practice which people do for reverse drawings um, the reverse is also true you know you can do the outline and then go deeper and deeper depending on the kind of work which you are doing so i did a lot of reverse work you know which we have seen in my um, painting uh, exhibition in white also so a lot of you know negative reverse black i used to use a, as a canvas you know predominant um, black only to show the the kind of power and negativity the pictures had you know enhancing that and then i went on to this is far more easier to control and then do it this technique is uh, monoprints so all this while you know i've been trying to really discover um Uh, discover what is my style how can i express the things which i wanted to express mono prints is nothing but you know you take the printing inks um, and then you spread them on a piece of glass or a or a smooth surface uh, and then you roll the colors which you want and then you etch out uh, or you draw out and then you take out with a knife or whatever depending on how detail and what you wanted to do and then place the paper on that and then roll that through um, very gentle pressing um, um, machinery uh, so that the glass will not be broken and then the color will not get uh, the ink will not get smudged so i practiced this for a while and then did some uh, nice work in that then i experimented with uh, you know the uh, the abstraction um, and also certain human format and little more deeper you know this i think i have gone little more uh, intellectual on this though my show was a big hit uh, that time because of the technique which i have used um, initially i did all my uh, i called them as drawings drawings i did by spray guns and uh, then i actually converted uh, them into etchings and then you can see the kind of abstraction the kind of uh, uh, metaphors i started uh, using in later part of my career then you know suddenly i felt that i must go back to simple form of ink drawings um, and then these ink drawings were done on uh, large sheets of papers with a I think Pops has frozen, right? His his. Yes, I experimented frozen. quite a lot. Though for money, you know, that is where the advertising started getting into me. Um, this is one of the most celebrated music director called K. V. Mahadevan. If you are a Tamilian or a South Indian, you would know. Even he has done um, with. Uh, um as as famous as rd burman at one point in time for his hindi music also he was a legend and then he started doing this kind of you know portraits and making money on the side uh, this was a youth festival in my college you know which i won eight gold medals uh, which nt ramara came and then gave me and then i knew my grandfather and uh, he We were good friends, and then they both knew each other. Though my grandfather was senior, but they acted in uh, some seven or eight films together. Um, so he was just reminding me that now you also started looking like me because he came from a set, and then he was having his 
his beard uh, and then also his glasses is that shri devi at the bottom yeah shri devi is sitting here okay shri devi is sitting here this was at ravindra bhatti these are all other college students you know which are surrounded him there was no not much of security those days <laughs> then i got married and a um, lot of life events changed with marriage then i had another marriage with chax <laughs> uh, actually you know chax and i became friends and uh, partners much before uh, even i knew my wife uh, from uh, 84 85 onwards you know there's a lot of influence we both had um, on each other's work um, so whatever chax could write till yesterday i could write and whatever i could uh, draw or not draw but you know art direction i could uh, i could do chax could do that today um, we were competitive in that spirit and learn from each other and then as a team you know a lot of things were common between us um, and then we uh, worked as a team and later on you know that partnership um, lasted for uh, close to 25 years a uh, little more than that and then after that um, now we are great friends and uh, chax and me are also neighbors and then whatever we did in life you know a lot of things we did together we bought our cell phones together we bought our cars together <laughs> you know a lot of things together wherever we used to go even now also you know tony um if we both are there you know he will start addressing me as chax and chax as pops um so that's the kind of friendship and exchange so uh, as when i came to advertising you know uh, while my childhood values observations and experiences remained with me with the newer craft and then the newer canvas for me uh, was actually given by a um, lot of partners which i had friends you know who actually guided me through this journey in advertising you know and really really grateful to all my friends uh, one of the things you know memorable ones you know which we did was to design and then launch jet airways um, so i mean we talk about startups you know this startup started with uh, uh, with three people um, and then chax and i joined uh, the team then we were five and uh, javed actor joined the board so he was the sixth person for many many months you know we were the original team for the startup um, though we were working with lintas guided designed uh, um, and then you know got the feedback of everything so they i mean the trust was so much that we were working as an extension of jet airways arm so when we did the logo you know for the first time any indian has ever um, uh, created a uh, a logo which is not symmetrical uh, in the world you not know, just in india which is not symmetrical if you see all the airlines will have very symmetrical logo uh, so that you know the two sides of the plane when you reproduce that it won't change uh, then being a rebel you know um, i said no i will break all the rules and i will do something which nobody has ever done and then i will make this you know travel across the world and everybody to sit up and then say that you know this is modern and contemporary and and something new which uh, which people will never see in a way in a metaphorical way jet airways represented modern indian not just indian aviation but modern india in 91 when natsima rao uh, started the reforms and uh, then the um, lot of sectors and foreign companies uh, uh, coming to india so this is one of the first companies uh, which actually changed the aviation and then the business perceptions of uh, india um, so when we did that you know it was fine and uh, ansett australia was doing all the um, decals for the plane and all that uh, so they wanted me to give the design for the other side of the plane so i had an issue because this is supposed to be the uh, speed lines going into into a flying sun 
flying sun incidentally was invention of jaxus making sense of some abstract thing which i created um so that uh, you know i if i were to turn this this way it makes no sense because it will go against the wind against the tail so quietly i actually uh, reverse the image on the other side of the plane and then i had sent the artworks to um, australia jacks new i knew nobody else in the world knew so even those guys you know ansat guys you know they didn't know you know what to do with a with a logo which is been given in a reverse format uh, so when set jet airways was launched we were at the gallery jrd tata uh, came in in a chopper sharad power came in in a special um, 16 seater aircraft and uh, you have boni kapoor sri devi uh, to padmini kolapuri to entire bollywood who is who of indian industry including jrd tata everyone was there indian industry everyone uh, was waiting for the first aircraft to arrive from australia uh, to india and then when will it touch down and naresh goel the owner of the aircraft was just uh, um, waiting with his mother and a huge uh, ladder to go and then break a coconut and and then start the airline on its nose <laughs> so everybody all the anticipation was there and uh, um, uh, when the flight landed um, when it was taking a turn on the tarmac we were exposed to the other side of the aircraft so i thought i have lost my job and naresh goel being the free he is and then he will kill me that day and uh, linta and alek padamsi and everybody will be up in arms um, so javed akhtar was next to me and then javed always supported jacks and me and uh, the little private joke was when i presented and everybody voted for this logo including javed um, and then he whispered in my ears that somehow i see a fetus in your logo i said once you see a fetus it won't get away <laughs> you will always see a fetus so when the flight landed and it took took a turn and then he uh, took uh, you know little surprised by the uh, by the reverse logo but you know um, he acknowledged and whispered in my ear saying that your fetus you know turned out to be a healthy baby now <laughs> Uh, so uh, that was the kind of boldness and experimentation um, which we were uh, doing even in advertising you know from where uh, uh, from you know our different uh, backgrounds chats is also a rebel you know is to sit in a, i mean sleep in his college with a cycle chain under his um, under his uh, uh, bed so he is also kind of rebel uh, in lot of his Uh, did he never went back to the university uh, to take his degree i always used to tease him saying that you are b e a b f uh, that means b e appeared but failed show me your certificate if you have passed in the same way i never looked back i never went to take my either bfa degree or uh, um, uh, never took my bsc degree you know we were you know like that and then we did the uh, um, build a team which is as rebellious and then did lot of work together um, as rebels this is one of them so this went on to be um, an iconic an iconic uh, commercial for um, very very long time pops one
Can you guys hear the sound? There seems to be some problem with the sound. Yes, it it, it wasn't very smooth. Have you optimized the sound for sharing? Of there some issue with the sound? Yeah, um, yeah, some issue with the sound. Uh, um, you can hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear. We can hear you. Yeah. So you can see them on um, on the YouTube. Um, the last two commercials I showed. The first one uh, out of the last two, the Sony one was done um, by me and uh, Nitesh. So one of the things which I um, which I do, you know, that's what I was saying. You know, the values uh, uh, your upbringing will have an impact on the kind of work which you do. So somewhere uh, uh, in two thousand three, um, population first uh, wanted to really uh, embark on a program of discrimination of girl child. And uh, from that time onwards, today I'm on the um, I'm one of the trustees and 
on the board of population first and uh, uh, UNFPA ambassador for uh, gender bias in advertising, media, and uh, feature films. So those days, you know, we never used to find work, you know, which actually uh, represented um, unbiased version of a girl. But so they always used to be biased. So we said, you know, we need to stop that. And then the first campaign which we did, you know, very cautiously before that, yeah, we used to do it. Uh, but deliberately, uh, uh, I did was for HDFC Life. Um, so for HDFC Life, even today, if you see advertising, in, you know, it's all always empowered women. And then boys are equivalent to girls are equivalent to boys. In fact, you know, they showcase more girls than boys. Uh, we started, you know, started with that, you know, I started experimenting with, uh, with HDFC, then I went to Tata of, uh, Capital, Tata Finance, and uh, General Motors, and a lot of other brands, you know, started actually um, introduce uh, the girls, not the boys, uh, empowering the girls, and then girls are equal, and they're capable of given an opportunity, they will do it. The last commercial, you know, the second, the Samsung one is not done by me and I have nothing to do with that. But the reason why I'm showing that is today, uh, you know, uh, whether it is feature films uh, like Dangal or um, um, Panga or uh, any of those or, um, or the OTT, you know, content or uh, the kind of advertising which we see you know, the uh, ADL one and uh, uh, a lot of other brands. Proper representation of women and especially girl child uh, is happening. Uh, those days, you know, even we want to do the award. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. We can. We can. Yeah. yeah. So even in those days, uh, um, even to award such uh, advertising, which actually uh, portrayed uh, uh, the girls without any bias. We wanted to award them, award them, but we never used to find any work in journalism, in feature films, in uh, advertising, or in fiction, uh, any of those um, uh, those things. Probably one or two journalists used to write some rebel stories. Uh, that's it, you know, not very much. Now, in 2003 uh, to 2021, you know, 18 years, now you see the equal rights of women, equal representation of women, you know, at least in media advertising and uh, feature films, you know, whether it is uh, uh, D.A. Zindagi or whether it is uh, English for English or whether it is Dangal, um, any, any movies which you take or... Uh, uh, today, you know, it's far more uh, represented, women were represented, and then they have been given uh, far more importance. So this social change has happened because uh, of the initiatives which we have taken that point in time. So I said, you know, we cannot change the world at uh, uh, everyone, but advertising is the most powerful medium. Hundreds of crores that people spend on creating ads. And in first a couple of years, none of my clients knew that I replaced a boy to a girl. You know, why am I writing stories about beautiful girls, not boys anymore? They never, you know, they never saw any difference. They liked the story and said, go ahead and then do it. So without even the system knowing, uh, you know, we were uh, able to um, change uh, the behavior of people and then the mindset of people through uh, portrayal, you know, it is like hum do hamare do, uh, correct? And uh, it is like, you know, ideal family, one boy, one girl. You know, that actually created more damage. That time it was very good, you know, two children are better than having five children or dozen children. Population burden will be low. But coming to think of now, ideal family is one girl, one boy. So if the first girl survives, the second girl will be killed and then she will never survive. Nobody wants to have two girls. They want to have one girl, one boy. If both happens to be boys, they're fine. It's a double dhamaka for them. But so, uh, I mean, at times in advertising, 
helps you uh, um, changing and altering the behavior of a society uh, and a culture and a nation. Um, and then how um, this kind of little interventions, you know, that's what I can do. I can't write a check like $30 billion like uh, Bill Gates can do or Jack Ma can do or somebody else can do. But we have the power to influence people. And then how do you use that power? You know, you can, you know, when you are writing something, you are staring a white paper. The kind of story which you choose to write is a reflection of the kind of person you are. And then the kind of person you grow up to be is the kind of work which you do. So there is an interrelation between the values which you practice and then the way you behave. Um, so there is, you know, a lot of, lot of, you know, childhood influences, you know, because all the women I knew, they're all independent women. They've never been treated less or more. Uh, and then they've, they've always fought against all odds and then took care of families, societies, and anything which is more than that. Um, so that's, that's the, and that's the reason why, you know, those two ads I have shown. Oops, I want to interrupt here. Sorry. Um, like we have another 10 minutes. So we were wondering if we could keep the major advertising chunk for the next session. Like we discussed, you know, we could have it in two episodes instead of trying to, you know, speed it up in any way, because it's there are such beautiful, uh, you know, experiences or efforts that, you know, you're sharing. It'll be nice if the audience also, you know, we keep some time to answer their queries and maybe take the remaining part of the journey to the next episode. So we can do that also, you know, pace it, uh, pace that also easily. Sure. Whatever you guys. So I should take another 15 minutes. With you. Okay. Okay. So I, I have, uh, I mean, on this point, before I forget, I have a very, uh, pointed question for you. You mentioned that the women in your, you know, that you were surrounded by mother, grandmother, uh, uh, you know, all very independent and, uh, you know, not treated any, any less. Uh, how did a person who has been influenced like that uh, understand actually the differences that society has, you know, in order to be able to address them? Because for you, it's, it's a natural thing, right? I mean, yeah. no one is not seen as you know, below or above. I mean, she's, everybody's at par. But you're addressing some very real issues of society where women are considered, you know, to be uh, inferior. And the, that perception has to be changed, right? So, I mean, I'm just trying to understand how that transition happened for you. Did you... But see, what happens in advertising, you know, the if you... Um persistence of vision, you know, if you see the same thing, you know, again and again and again, it will start, you know, uh, haunting you all the time uh, because of that uh, power it has. Uh, that's the reason why I said hum do hamare do or uh, um, the family planning of one, one boy, one girl. Because you are used to seeing that image for many years, you know, somewhere it instead of saying that, you know, small families are beautiful families, it started giving you a wrong message, saying that ideal family is a boy and a girl. When you actually show two girls, uh, and then you say, how wonderful. Correct, you have never seen two girls like that. Uh, so uh, 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 when you are actually touching upon things like that, um, the stories uh, which you tell people, the stories which we, uh, which we tell people actually makes them think if the stories are powerful, stories have that um, magical power. Um, and then that's the reason why the message uh, in advertising is almost like a homeopathy pill. So you have the entertainment on top of it and then somewhere inside is the medicine. So medicine will be bitter for you to swallow. But when you are quoting that with entertainment, it's easy for you to swallow. And then you even enjoy. So when you actually give those small doses of messages to people, 
you sugar coat them so beautifully well with a lovely story and then the end you know um, there was a story which uh, uh, which i had written and then did uh, a film um, four or five years back uh, where we had twins you know two girls and uh, they were set in a rural background you know while the poor uh, farmer and his wife uh, spend all the savings and everything to make them educated and then they both you know grow up together and then one day you know they realize that both the children's dream is to become a doctor and then the father says that i don't have where with all for educating both of you as a doctor right, to for medicine so imagine the plight of that father whom will you choose whom will you choose and then um, finally you know he says that yeah i will sell my land and then i will you know there is no greater thing than you know the wife says that this land is meant to be uh, for their wedding he says you know wedding is not important their education and future is uh, you know this is only for their future this is the future for them and he sells the land and then he educates both the girls and then make them as doctors the moment you see you know a beautiful stories like that how lovely for those twins to be two doctors and then you know specializing in two different subjects and then practicing so the moment you know your vision of an ideal family of a boy and girl will change to two beautiful girls at home so the more you show two girls in a family the more people will get used to it and aspire to that how lovely it is so otherwise you know the societal danger that the human race danger is you will in the future you will never find sisters sisterhood will die and it is only you know each time you see a boy uh, a brother and a sister so there could be you know, there will be lot of brothers and you know between brothers you know there will be two brothers in a family but there won't be two sisters in a family and imagine the cultural disaster which can have on uh, on the impact it can have on people so the the um, a uh, societal change which you bring will not happen overnight it takes long time that's why i have uh, told you that 18 years we were at it and we are growing you know year after year after year and then you can see yourself the difference between um, between you and your wife versus your daughters today we are all witnessing that so i am here my daughter was studying her uh, photography in goa and uh, 3 in the morning she wants to do a story uh, and then she wants to go to the middle of the ocean on a boat with three drunken boatsmen i said you know you have chosen it you know go and do it face it you know how to swim so what is your problem <laughs> uh because that that's how fiercely independent they need to be and uh, uh, that's how they need to grow in this uh, cruel world so things are changing you know things are changing and maybe it may take you know uh, more time but things will change uh, and then how can you bring change in human behavior you know how can you alter the behavior and then the thinking so everything which we which we try to do in advertising is to bring in that insight to shift from what you think uh, it is to uh, what it really is so there is a mark different between that and then slow it's like a slow poison the more you see it the more you digest it the more images are bombarded the more you get influenced by them without knowing any other questions i think one very nice thing that i'm seeing is like along with a brief that the client may have given you like you are sliding in your stories like you and and like you mentioned you know those important things that you think must be said so how 
like how was it to convince your clients that you know uh, or or like you said when you sugar coated it with such a beautiful story you know did they never uh, you know they, there was no scope for them to object to anything was it was it like that yeah, i mean basic human uh, nature no client will ever say do a bad ad do a bias that portray women like you know uh, rakshas you know they are really bad portray them as do man they won't say any of those they will give you what is the objective i want to sell more education policies i am an insurance company i don't care how you bring in more policies into and more business into my fold that's that's what they are interested in so when you go with a nice story and then we tell them you tell them a story that but that uh, um, instead of a boy you portrayed a girl who is going abroad to study in 2003 or 2002 it was not heard of you know always you you want to send your boys to uh, for the studies abroad and then you want your girls to get married and then go to some um, bharatiya vidyalaya in in juhu or vili parli or something so the moment you you turn the tables and then you make that girl as a smart intelligent girl who is actually uh, wanting to go abroad she has got 50% scholarship and then they are thinking that you know how do we finance the other 50% father proudly says that you know i have saved for it and then you know both of them uh, uh, the, the girl will um will take up the education and then go so when you were actually uh, when i was uh, presenting that film so the first thing which i told my client is when is the last time you saw a girl being seen of other than bidai mm. isn't it lovely to see your daughter going and then you know got a scholarship and then going and then study abroad so i don't know pops it will be wonderful i knew that that client suresh mahalingam has got two lovely daughters <laughs> i know he is going to fall for it <laughs> nice so a lot of times you know whatever means you take can then you take and after that you know when i uh, wrote the story with uh, with uh, tata capital so you know uh, the managing director pravin kadle uh, ceo of that company you know it was a huge company started with 10000 crore uh, all finance companies of tatas coming together um so i went and uh, uh, told him that somewhere you know there lot of finance companies lot of banking uh, is been using children and we also want to use children because of honesty innocence and all the tata values which are there he said fine uh, go and then use it so i told him that um, at the age of 6 to 8 do you like girls at that of that age or do you like boys of that age we said girls uh, girls will be lovely correct my wife always tells me that if you have a girl who is 5 6 and then wanting to uh, to dress up we can buy so many things boys are rascals you know they will break up things at that age <laughs> you give him a toy he'll break everything uh, correct and they told them that you know isn't it lovely to see girls like that you know doing beautiful things on screen and wouldn't that be aspirational to a lot of people you know who have girls of that age he said fine then and narrated the story he said very well go ahead and then do it so each time when you actually um, you tell clients that you are going to do a charity you are going to do an ngo film or you are going to do, do for your principles they will say that you know no we are not here to finance your ego or your principles or your values or uh, clients uh, or uh, uh, your agencies you know we are here for a commercial reason as long as the commercial reason uh, is taken care you know everything is fine so if you have that equation and if you are able to convince them that you can take care of the commercial need of the brand and then you tell the story 
the way you want to tell the story no client will ever say that you know open the film with i feel tired it's the greediness of the of the uh, of the copywriters who want to visit paris will set a story in paris because they'll get a free trip and holiday <laughs> you can set it anywhere you know uh, so a lot of things you know uh, you learn the skills of of uh, of how to narrate a story and then clients are also human beings and if you narrate a line, line story they will fought for you whether it is for the commercials or real life story and then they will emote with that and 99% of the time have been successful in doing that even for sony uh, even convincing mr amita bachchan to really sign in for that uh, that cause so entire kbc has changed you know from the greed of money to the need of money so when you actually say there's a lot of people hating you because you are giving money to people who never uh, uh, who never needed money give it to people who desperately need money and provide a platform for the girls to come up and so all these thoughts you know really made kbc make you know sony make money when uh, star was losing money on the same program sony ji are there any other questions for box uh, in the in the in the even i would ask the audience like if if there are any questions kindly yeah, share yeah. them now pop should we pause the screen share so we can see you and you know we can have that discussion yeah i was trying to get out of this okay i think if you press escape it'll yeah Yeah. yeah i was also curious to know how that shift from fine arts to advertising happened see as you have uh, as i have narrated stories so i've never had enough money to finance my art so i had to do something you know there were three choices which i had and i pursued um, uh, pursued all three by training myself you know one being a drawing teacher you will get four months holiday and you will almost get a half a day holiday every day drawing teacher is going to work full time of the school and then you know school is closed for four months so you will get lot of time to do your painting that's one option and then the disadvantage with that is they pay you peanuts you can't finance anything you know live well on your art with that money so you will end up being a selling artist you know with a jolly you know all your life the second option i had was because i studied botany as well as chemistry uh, and all my friends were getting into um, into uh, medical uh, um, and uh, 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 pharmaceutical profession wanting to become you know salesman they medical reps you know handsome salary those days you know 500 rupees was a good salary plus a lot of uh, um, perks and incentives if you sell more and uh, you get a bike you get free petrol you get free dinner you get free booze and then you can travel your area and then you can do all the debauchery which you want and then the traveling will give you enough enough canvas for you to do some sketches and drawings but the disadvantage of that is you may end up being just a salesman and then with all these bad company and bad habits you may become one more frustrated um, drunken guy the third option which i had was to use my art and science get into advertising at least there will be some connection to your mind and some connection to your skill so then i got into advertising um as a finishing artist then i got promoted to be an illustrator then i got promoted to be an art director then uh, i started then television came in then started uh, um uh, learning the skill of telling stories 
and um, became a storyteller and then started uh, working on that today you know um, i'm back to being a traveling salesman <laughs> <laughs> so paul so tell me yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know the, the the thing you talked about uh, the variety of work and expertise that uh, you know the greatest artists have had uh, from you know architecture to sculpting to painting to what not to engineering you know uh, and uh, looking at you know your journey the kind of stuff that you've done uh, across so many uh, disciplines where is it that now art education is headed because you don't find this kind of variety in a lot of the younger artists you know it's it's like pretty bracketed in terms of what is what they are taught and you know what they are exposed to or what is expected of them uh, do you one do you fundamentally agree with this and secondly i mean what needs to be done in order to probably put things back on track because obviously it makes a huge difference to a, to an artist And yeah, well. I mean, all of them are connected. You know, um, everything. You know, the the observation which you have help you in creating the kind of uh, uh, images which you want to create, and the insight which you have into your life and then your uh, uh, friends' lives or your neighbors' life or generally uh, in people's life. You know, will enrich you in connecting with people. Um, and those days you know even i am guilty of not being as passionate as uh, um as these great masters have been actually yeah, um so this generation i think you know everybody wants to start with a super specialization you know right. why do i want to be i want to do typography uh, or i want to do um, an illustration why should i uh, learn perspective and geometry why should i learn about nature drawing why should i learn about memory why should i learn about human anatomy um and all we were exposed and the more you explore things in your childhood you know the more um learned decisions which you can make of what you like so as children you know all of us there is no exception in the world all of us uh, we would have painted we would have played we would have sang and then uh, uh, we would have danced we would have done everything but only few people continue to play and then those will become tendulkars and gavaskars and virat kohlis or sindhu or you know saina or any one of them we think it is child childish you know kya khelte hai maidan mein jaake ke bachchon ka khel and then you don't and uh, art you know everybody all of us have done drawing we always had a drawing class and then we had to draw the first thing children learn before alphabet is how to draw and then if you see the children when they draw they narrate a story so if you wait to sit next to your children or your grandchildren and then see them draw when they draw they narrate the story which may not you, know, you may not get all that they draw a matchstick figure and then say that this is my father and then they draw another matchstick figure which is slightly smaller my mother and this is me another matchstick small matchstick and then another matchstick with four legged thing this is my dog this is my house this is the market this is the tree everything is bare minimal uh, symbolic you know things which are matchstick figures anybody can draw at any point in time but what they are actually trying to do is they may not have skills uh, as an artist but their mind is seeing a vivid picture of this family my father goes out to buy fish my mother has flowers in her hair you know i play with my doggy we are returning home we did our shopping and returning home we have a tree and then there is a bird on the tree mind you not everybody can actually uh, observe that there is a uh, bird living on the tree 
this entire story, you know, look at their uh, grasping power and the observation and vividity of that recollection and uh, imagination. They may not have the skill. That's the reason why the most beautiful, you know, paintings of children is best heard when they're drawing. Uh, but so, you know, that's, that's the exploration, you know, we all do. We all do. And if you want to be a great artist, and you have to be an architect, correct? If you are an architect, you know what to do and where to, because that's also an art. You are constructing and then basically creative people, they like building things. They like things shaping in front of them. So that, you know, whether you are an engineer, whether you are a sculptor, whether you are an artist, you start with a blank canvas and then you build up things. So they like building up things. And then once you explore uh, everything possible and then have some knowledge of all that, all that will, will help in doing what you are doing better. So if you, if you are doing uh, a painting and which is set a portraiture of a old woman and a granddaughter sitting on a sofa, object drawing you have to do, you have to draw the sofa, you have to draw the people, to draw the people, you need to know the anatomy, to draw the sofa, you need to do object drawing, perspective and observation, and then the skeleton of the frame and then the wood and on that, you know, the fabric, the cushion, and then the engravings. So all that, you know, the kind of chair which you wanted to draw and how will that look in this perspective? Even if you see the Last Supper, there is um, a perspective in that, you know, the way the table is laid, the way the ceiling is going in. So it is very important to learn all the things which actually helps you. And uh, somehow our education, um, you know, has deteriorated so much. People are taught only one thing. They can only do that and nothing else. So your overall growth is zero. Growth in one thing is very high. This is, therefore, you become a super specialist. I don't know anything else. But the relation between one to another is very, you know, look at doctors. They're all super specialized. You know, there's a psychiatrist and then there is um, a kidney guy. And then the kidney guy has been giving lots of medicines, which is affecting the neurology and then also the mind of that. And then conflicting with the medicines your psychiatrist is giving. But they never met together to understand what the chemical reactions of these two medicines are going to be on the patient. So aren't they connected? And if you know enough about, about the other subject, then you empathize, you say that, okay, so you can form the hypothesis or pick up the phone and then call the doctor and then take his opinion, understand that and then start treating it. So that that is there in almost every everything. You know, the super specialist is killing uh, the craft part of it. And then therefore, you know, everything is available at mass scale. Today, you look at about architecture. You know, 40 years back when I started traveling or 35 years back, you know, when you go to Singapore, there's a different smell of Singapore. When you go to Istanbul, there's a different smell. When you go to Prague or Paris, or you go to any other city, Calcutta, Delhi, Hyderabad, Bangalore had a character. Today you go to Wakefield and then you go to um, the high-tech city in Hyderabad, they look identical. And even Stanford, uh, even if you are in San Jose, they all look the same. Wherever you go in the world, the buildings look the same. The cars you drive are the same. Everything is the same from where you bring in creativity and then how can you really bring in something which is new and which reflects that society and that behavior and then the environment of uh, that time. So every architectural drawing or building or every painting or every sculpture or every terracotta work which is being done, every piece of jewelry which is being created, you know it's time and age. 
and then you take last last forty years of jewelry, almost the same. Forty years of sarees, same potu saree, same thing. Nothing, no innovation has happened. No, this thing has happened. And then to understand, you know, all the things which are and your chemical technology, and then your machinery, and then uh, ability to put in yeah, imagination, cultural perspective, social perspective, mythological perspective. Then you can create sarees. You know, not with the same motive. But motives which are uh, of today, and then if you don't learn all the discipline, five different people are working on that, sitting in five different rooms, and then they all do their own stuff, and then therefore you know they never come together. And then one guy used to do everything; he used to orchestrate the building, the sculptures, the interiors, and then the ceilings with paintings, and then the plants which needs to be planted around. And then the animals which needs to be uh, surrounded by, and then the armory which needs to be there. The kitchens used to be designed. Everything used to be designed by those those guys. You know, now to get such a design, you have to buy an ID, a student in every discipline, and then put all thirty people together, and then make them design a uh, design a house or a place, and also the um, JJ School of Art together. Otherwise, they will never be able to bring all the things together. So that's the difference. And then, therefore, things started drifting away. Of course, this is a different time, different age. We are living in a, diff- a digital age. Everything can be duplicated, replicated five thousand times and millions of times. And then you are talking about work which lived millions of years. Only one piece, original piece. That's it. So the value of that is far greater than the value of this. Of course, there will always be gem and those uh, little stones uh, which are precious. And then today we are missing those, and then we have a lot of gem. Even fine art college also today three years. You know, we learned for six years fine art, and then today fine art is reduced to three years. And private colleges have come in, and later they will actually reduce it to two years. And then maybe a three months course, you will get a degree. So what can you learn? You know, it took us, you know, almost twenty, twenty-five years to practice and then come to certain level. Uh, even that is also one percent of what our uh, great masters have ever done. So where is the hope in hell for anyone to to create anything which is as great as uh, the predecessors made? Awesome. I think Pops, there is like uh, so much to uh, talk to you about. Uh, what what we can do is uh, we we can uh, we've taken too much of your time. Also, it's been such a lovely uh, and inspiring uh, you know session. Uh, so much uh, heard about you. I mean, I, I mean, I've known you for so many years. I never knew this 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 side of you. You know, and the and the history that uh, you know made you who you are today. uh but uh, you know there's there's stuff that we can talk about in terms of education there's stuff that we can talk about uh, you know your life in advertising that is one area that we would love to hear you know the campaigns that you worked on uh, interesting stories there you know dealing with different types of clients over uh, these 50 years you know the uh, how mindsets have changed uh, society has changed and you know adapting to all those changes so uh we would definitely like to have another session with you and uh, you know uh, take this forward and part 2 uh, episode 2 for us uh, and we will coordinate with you uh, on when is a convenient time for us to schedule this uh, so if there are any uh, questions before we leave uh, or maybe weber ji you can do the traditional the spotlighting i think a lot of people yes uh, i was just uh, wondering you know, So I would them, request everyone to switch on their cameras. So I'm I'm going to spotlight all of you. So Pops also gets to meet all of you, see all of you. Yeah, quite a few have. Uh, Alvin, also- Gorav, Prashant, Akshay. Like a quick before we close today's session, it'll be nice if we can all just. Ah, there you are, Akshay. There's Akshay. Akshay, where are you joining us from? 
you are on mute yes go ahead no we can't hear you actually i can't hear you yes so can you hear me <laughs> yes yes hello i think the bandwidth is pretty low so from kerala by joining us from kerala yeah great thanks awesome. thanks akshay i think there are others who saying the webcam isn't working so that's okay all right so maybe you know we'll see you again in yeah. in the, in the next session there there was a sizable crowd of people who were there and i think uh, as as the evening has progressed saturday evening so <laughs> chat uh, so see there i call you chat <laughs> uh, uh, as you said it's saturday so but a uh, lot of uh, messages i received on uh, on whatsapp where people you know want to catch this recording on youtube right so, will be and prashant Prashant is also saying that he's from Devas. His webcam is not working right now, but okay. hope to see you in episode two, Prashant. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, pops, thanks a lot. It was lovely. I mean, uh, fantastic revelations. And, uh, looking forward to episode two, where uh, you know we talk a lot more about your professional journey. and uh, stuff that you've done which you can share with us uh, and of course your insights on far many more interesting topics uh, there's this so much to learn from you as always thank you and uh, you know whatever tony is saying is all not true uh, it pays sometimes to have good friends like you you always say nice things about you uh, Uh, but uh, i thoroughly um, enjoyed preparing for this um, because it was quite a task to dig out even this uh, work you know apart from uh, the work which i have done on ipops you know a lot of other things are a struggle uh, my studio in um, at home is a junkyard um, so a lot of things you know god knows you know where they are including 4 feet by 4 feet canvases i couldn't place because there were so many uh, things around them um, so hopefully i'll try and then fish out some of uh, some of those and then lovely to discover um, uh, go back and then relive my old memories and uh, not only you probably it would be a surprise to my wife and children also because i've never spoken this um extensively about my childhood and art uh, both of them together um so it was wonderful and uh, probably you know the next meeting don't do it on a saturday or a friday the 13th uh so avoid those uh, and then maybe you know we'll find um a slot where more people can participate uh and uh, hopefully you know um which will be soon enough um and uh, i will try to fish out little more um a good work uh, and then use this time okay awesome. 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 and and next time probably we will leave more time for interaction um because uh, yes if i keep talking um <laughs> i won't learn anything correct right? um so if people keep talking you know people ask questions and then if they express their views uh, it will be a learning for me so yeah. i hope that this will be a two way learning process and i will go much more richer next week thank, thank you thank you thank you so much we will coordinate uh, you know a convenient time and uh, then take it forward from there and uh, make sure that uh, i wanted to get a lot many of your uh, you know colleagues also involved and to have them on online with us so we'll uh, you know get to hear Uh, the other side of the story as well so uh, sure. looking forward to catching up with you again uh, pops thank you so much once again and uh, thank you big thanks to whistling woods also for facilitating this platform for us to you know chat long hours and interact with all the participants from different places so all right so thank you, 
thank you and uh, we will share the link for the youtube uh, recording of this session thank you thank, thank you, you guys thank you so much bye bye, bye. bye. see you next session